so I got a call, and you wouldn't believe what just happened. It's beautiful. Well, look what we have. That little guy was just born today. We have three out of our four calves are born. We have one more um, cow that needs to give birth, and I believe it is that one right there, or that one right there. The great part about these guys is I don't do anything other than just let them give birth. Don't come out here, I don't worry about them. I've never had to, I've just let them do their thing. And it's amazing, and you can see what they've done to this field. They have one move left. I believe that move will come tomorrow. But the rest of the field has been grazed down really nicely. We do have some seed heads and some, some stocky stuff, but it's very, very minimal amount. And so this field's just about done. After this field, after that move, they'll move across the road. And then after that move, they'll move all the way back to our farm. All right, we're gonna head up to Harmon's. We are with our pigs who have been doing work for us. And I'll show you what they've been doing so far. They've done a really amazing job. I know it doesn't look like much. It looks like just a bunch of dead stuff. But what they've done is they've actually started to go in they're starting to till up. They're starting to remove some of this stuff. And while it's nothing impressive, it's nothing amazing, I'm feeding my pigs and they're getting work done for me while I'm gone. Now, I probably could clear this whole area in 10 minutes or 15 minutes with an excavator or my brush hog on my tractor. Sure. But I needed to get the pigs somewhere and I need them to be in a place that they would enjoy. And they enjoy this. How do I know they enjoy this? Well, because this fence is probably about as hot as a nine volt battery. I'm gonna be honest. But the pigs are staying in, and they're staying in, well, because they're well fed, and they're happy, and they have shade, and they have water, they have shelter, they have everything they want, and so why go somewhere else? It's like a lot of us. You know, we work for companies that we're not really enthralled with. Well, because there's a pay. Humans are not that much different than pigs, in my opinion. I just brought some grain in for them. They're down here. And I, you can see I put it where I want them to till stuff up. So I put some over there on a pile over there. I put some over here around the roots of some of these vines. In the next week or so, I'm gonna be picking up that other, that smaller greenhouse that my friend's giving me. We'll see what kind of parts and what we need for putting it in. I'll probably put it right in here. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. I may even move the ground and level it off a little because I plan on using that to do starts and all kinds of stuff like that. I wanna put it close to that one because I already have water here and it won't be hard to get a water line to come off that main all the way through here. I can just bring a water source all the way to here. I won't always use the well house for doing all this. There's multiple reasons for that. One of them is a legal thing. Once I start selling, I have to be pulling the water off of a legal source. And in that case for me, it's gonna be a pond, a rainwater catchment pond. So I can't use the well if I wanna sell anything. But for right now, since everything is pretty much just personal use, it's not a problem. I wanna give you guys a bit of an update on our potato towers. Our potato towers are doing amazing. They really are coming along. There is one issue I'm seeing. So I haven't been able to find the culprit of what is eating my leaves. But both of these towers have something eating the leaves. And I can't find it. So it's not all the plants, but there's definitely, there's some critter in here that's just nibbling away at my potatoes. But they're turning out pretty good. They're all starting to sprout. There's still new sprouts coming out every day. We see a new couple sprouts. We got tons of figs coming on. Now, in the past, we haven't got a lot of our figs because these trees are actually like 15, in some cases 20, 25 feet tall. So we haven't got a lot of figs. What I did was I came in and I pruned all the fig trees behind the ones right here on the road. And the reason for that is Herman doesn't like to prune the fig trees. And unfortunately we kept losing fig trees because they were getting way, way, way too tall. I've seen Christine's uncle, he passed away this last year, um, but he used to take his fig tree in front of their house in Philadelphia. It didn't even have really a yard. He would cut it down every like two years, like to the ground. And everybody thought he was gonna kill the thing. And, and sure enough, for the next two, three years, he had these huge, uh, delicious figs. And then he would come in and he cut it down again. So that's pretty much what we did, is we came in, we cut them back, 
and you can actually see, not all of them, but a lot of them have, well, this is unfortunate that that's growing on there, but a lot of them have fresh starts coming out all over the place. And so, and there are some dead branches in here and there's also some taller branches in here, as you can see. I left a good mix of both with the idea that we'd come in and we'd have good, healthy fig trees over the next couple of years. Uh, there are definitely, this is a definitely a bit of a mess. The problem is that I couldn't get in here and like really like start pulling stuff out because it would upset Herman. But I needed to get in here and do this because we kept losing huge fig branches. We'd have these frost come in and it would just snap a fig branch off. Frost plus snow and you just end up with a huge branch on the ground and it really damages the tree. So we pruned them back. This is also going to allow for us to pick the, the figs versus the birds to pick the figs because that's actually what had been happening. The last couple of years we'd had a lot of birds picking figs and squirrels picking figs and not us picking figs. Matter of fact, last year we got almost zero figs off the tree. When I say we got zero figs off the tree, we I didn't take any home. The year before that, we had tons of them. But last year, the birds got to them all. We couldn't pick them in time. Like, we couldn't even pick them at all. Like, there was just nothing to pick. We're going to get all this bramble out of here. I just need an opportunity to do it when um, Herman's not going to see me do it. So I have to be a little sneaky on this one. Oh. All right, well, I obviously am in suffering from some allergies. I'm actually, I have a doctor's appointment in a little bit, so I'm gonna go to that. And I will see you guys on another day. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope this little update about the pigs and the figs is enough to suffice for a day.